He was the musical director and manager. He served as a youth minister, conducting musical revivals in the U.S., and, assist, and assisted his mother, Ruth Helen Darty, who was the pastor of the Christ Pentecostal Holiness Church, the overseer church of the seven churches in the conference. In 1975, with his mother's blessing, Pastor Levi joined with the late Reverend Dr. Sun Myung Moon and the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity. After three years of service and missionary work around the world, in 1979, Reverend Dr. Moon introduced him to his loving wife, Claire Christine Allen, who became the stepmother of his six children. Together they pro produced five more children, and along with her one child before the marriage blessing, brought their family to a total of 12 children, and now they have 22 grandchildren and 23 great-grandchildren. In 1989, yes, an amazing man. In 1989, Pastor Levi was awarded an honorary doctorate of ministry from the Divinity School of Illinois. In 1998, Reverend Dr. Moon installed him as the vice president of HSA UWC, and on May 22nd, 2020, he became the co-founder and executive director of the American Clergy Leadership Conference and is now acting as senior executive advisor of that organization. In 2019, Pastor Levi received the leadership of the Georgia True Family Community Center and was made state leader of Georgia. Retiring from those positions in 2021, he began working full-time with the True Kingmaker Foundation as its co-founder and president. He is also publisher of the Kingmaker Magazine, a nonprofit publication which expounds on black history and the untold stories of the American struggle. In 2023, he will be once again publishing the American Clergy Magazine. Also in 2023, he will become the parliamentarian of the Norfolk, Virginia Civic League. He is currently serving as the senior advisor for the Norfolk Family Church, and as an ACLC lecturer that teaches Divine Principle Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and by conference call at 8.30 p.m. and every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pastor Levi Doherty is fervent in his faith, dedication to God, and the work of building the heavenly culture. He is truly an anointed man of the cloth. Uh, Pastor Levi, are you here with us? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, and thank you, Pastor Allen, for your incredible work that you do. I heard you this morning on the 6 o'clock prayer call, you and your beautiful wife sharing the work that you do, and it's just amazing uh, that you can keep up with it all. And for this particular program, the American Clergy Leadership Conference is honoring those who work so hard uh, as pastors. I was really impressed by uh, uh, the different pastors that came up and prayed because many times we will have what they call a prayer breakfast and we do everything else but pray. <laughs> but this was really wonderful. Uh, and really spirit felt too as well. I'm just so grateful for that. Now, as you know, I always ask for prayer because you heard about my background. I'm a Pentecostal preacher. So I have to always ask the angels to keep the reins on me because some people may not understand if I get too loud. But nevertheless, um, we, we are, and, and especially the brother who prayed for the schools, I was very moved by that. Because they've taken prayers out of school, but they have not taken prayers out of us. So no, right. we are still praying for those who cannot pray. Uh, because 
I want to share something with you today that I pray that we can share later on. As you heard that I, I the, the, the American Clergy Leadership Conference National Prayer Call is on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I share Divine Principle Bible Study. I teach the Divine Principle of the Bible. Basically, is what this is all about. And, and so, over time, God has been working with us. And these are a bunch of ministers that get on. One, as far as from Canada, uh, just got on a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he's bringing other people on as well. So, these are very important times that we're living in. And I, I would like to start out, <clears throat> I would like to start out this, this talk uh, with, the, with the Bible scripture. <clears throat> if you go with me to Luke 17, um, Luke 17, I'll do, start at the 20th verse. Uh, now when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God will come, Jesus answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will it come, nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Some Bible says the kingdom of heaven is within you. And I want to talk it off with the, uh, Jesus said when he prayed, thy kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And so these set of slides, if you could put the first one up for me, uh, these sets of slides um, is very important that we go with them. And so I just want to go with the uh, with the first one. I'm going to ask Reverend, Reverend Devetta Morgan to read them for me. You want me to start reading? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Why can't I get this other one off of here? Okay. Eek. I got it. The kingdom of heaven culture. We will start this lesson by discussing what is the kingdom of heaven and what is the kingdom of heaven culture. We should find out as much as we can about the kingdom of heaven from the scriptures in the Bible, since this is the first place that we heard about the kingdom of heaven. The writers of the Old Testament gave us biblical history which focuses primarily on the kingdom of heaven or Canaan, which is a place where God dwells. Although the kingdom of heaven concept started from the Bible, it is still lingering in deep discussion in today's world. Is the kingdom of heaven some place that we go, or is it some place that is in the midst of us, or could it be that the kingdom of heaven is within? What does that mean in me, in my body, on my spirit? Let's try to answer these questions if we are ourselves seeking the kingdom of heaven. Though we may not be perfect, we are looking for the perfect direction toward the kingdom. That must be the only way we can arrive at this wonderful place that we have imagined to be living in someday. It also looks like we have been searching for this place or trying to get there or understand it for the 6,000 years of biblical history. Heaven is the main discussion in the Bible for Christian and religious people today. The first place that we see the word heaven mentioned is in the Bible in Genesis 1 and 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the King James Version of the Bible, heaven is mentioned 327 times. Staying with the King James Version, the word love is mentioned 310 times. We can see that the words love and heaven are related to each other in desire for you. 
The word love is mentioned more than 310 times in the Revised Standard Bible. We already know that there can be no heaven in the absence of love. Love is a necessary component for life itself. Even bad people, or so-called hellish people, desire love. In most cases, the word love becomes the most desired word to hear when people are talking about us at the same time. And, of course, when we are making love intimately, it is heaven for us to hear the word love during that moment. Some people will even say after they finish making intimate love, boy, wow, that was heavenly. In doing so, they are expressing the highest level of enjoyment as they describe that moment of pleasure. We can see describing heaven can be complicated and complex in its understanding, but simple and good in its actions of receiving and returning love. Could the highest level of love be called divine love? Is this the love that is mentioned in the Bible hundreds of times? Even though we see in the beginning of Genesis that God created the heavens and the earth, is heaven sky? Sometimes, yes, it is mentioned with sky in the Bible. Therefore, there must be two or three kinds of heavens, maybe even more. However, in this lesson, we want to narrow the concept of heaven down to heaven on earth, as Jesus mentioned in his prayer in Matthew. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, therefore, we know there are at least two kinds of heavens we are going to be sharing about, the spiritual heaven and the physical heaven. Pastor? Pastor Darren? Next, next one, just keep reading. The next, the next slide, please. How can we extract the root of sin? Christians and secular people are told to repent. Just repent. Then if this is true, how then can they experience their repentance? Have you ever heard of writing a pledge or repentance prayer? Are Christians told to pray a repentance prayer? In the process of this repentance, they shout out, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, as if everything is all done. To uproot sin, repentance is necessary, but not just with words and empty phrases. You must shed tears of repentance with a runny nose and saliva dripping down with a desperate heart, throwing your dignity, self-pity, and honor away. We must be so desperate that we will even go to the point of death, not knowing if we will live or die. We should bow our heads to the ground and throw ourselves down while repenting. Those of us who have not shed tears in this way cannot reach the root of sin and remove it away. When we don't thoroughly repent with all of our heart, mind, and soul, we leave the door open to backslide or repeat our sin. At the moment we are repenting, we want to remove our sin and surely do not want to go back into that same atmosphere again. Let me explain. Due to the entrance of sin in our first ancestors, Adam and Eve, sin became a part of our mental, spiritual, and physical DNA. Therefore, it is not easy to remove sin by saying, Lord, forgive me, I repent, and thinking it's all removed and cleansed. In other words, because of that first sin that entered us, it became a part of our mind, heart, and physical being. These four elements became a part of our character and created a total society. We may think what the Reverend Moon is saying is all technical and lacking emotional spirit, but it is not. Let me explain further. The first attempt to remove sin was through Cain and Abel offering as a sacrifice. We must know what a sacrifice means. It is something very precious and dear that has to be offered up and pure to remove the sin. The second attempt was not who sacrificed a hundred years, it was Noah who sacrificed a hundred years or more to build the ark, and it was also not accepted because of his children's lack of faith. The third and most important was the sacrifice of a man's foreskin from his sexual reproduction organ, which was called circumcision. Physical fluid had to come from that which was blood, and physical skin, which was a body that represented the DNA. Abraham's love for God represents the heart. Abraham's mind to do the right thing was the willingness to be obedient to God's word. To accomplish this task, his whole soul had to be involved. Thus, you can see the mind, heart, soul, and body had to be completely invested to remove the sin that Abraham's children could be called the children of God and the Israelites as well. True repentance represents tears, which is the heart 
The runny nose represents the mind. The saliva represents completely losing, losing oneself and no shame. And the physical self being thrown down or bowing to the floor represents the body. It may seem like very technical things that we must do for our repentance to be true and accepted. It is not necessary to ask for forgiveness during our repentance time. If these four elements are totally involved, God will already forgive us. This is what it means to be free from sin. <clears throat> Why were angels created? Angels' mission and relationship with human beings. God's children, dominion over creation, rule over angels, created first, retainers and servants. That comes from Revelations 22 and 9, and ministering spirits. So we have God, human beings, and with that they rule over angels. Angels were created by God before any other creation. God created angels to be his retainers, that's in Hebrews 1 and 14. Servants coming out of Revelations 22 and 9, and ministering spirits coming out of Hebrews 1 and 14. These angels would assist God in creating and maintaining the universe. God created humans as his children and family. He wants to give them a partnership in the creation and eventually take dominion over all creation. We were to take dominion over not only the entire universe, but also the angels as well. This would be the true image and likeness of God with his children as partners. God created divine love as the driving force of the universal prime energy. The universe was designed as the model for the kingdom of heaven on earth. God's divine design is consistent with human beings becoming the temple of God. The human body, mind, and soul will become one with God as he dwells within. It will be a divine fusion of God and mankind. One would say, a match made in heaven. Heaven and earth's desi divine design would be the greatest and most important designs of all times. It was to be the core of all other designs that would take place in history. Godism would be the intellectual order, and love or living for the sake of each other would be the social order on earth. Now we understand why repentance is fundamental to entering the kingdom of heaven. The True Family Gateway to Heaven is a little book, book written by Reverend Moon that tells the story of how to reach heaven through our family. The greatest way to repent and grow is in the family structure. The way the family is designed covers all characteristics of how to become divine through loving one another and serving each other as the true image and likeness of God. Pardon me for reading fast, but we're trying to get through these. With this model, there would be no evil in the world at all. Human beings would never know what the meaning of evil is if sin had not occurred in the garden through the first family of God and humanity. Let us further take it, study. Take your, take your time, Debella. Take your time. Let us God is working. God is working. Let us further study the pros and cons of living in a heavenly culture. First of all, there would be no need for religion, synagogues, churches, or temples or what we would call places of worship. That concept would not even exist. All of these things would be handled directly in one's family with God as the vertical center and the heavenly culture of living for the sake of others, of each other on the horizontal or human level. Every invention that we use today is far behind what life would be without sin, which would mean everyone would be living a life of service and care for one another. Due to the angel Lucifer's misguidance, we all lost our minds, which were given to us by God, our original mind, or the godly mind. Therefore, insanity has become a normal way of life, and only extremely disturbed people are considered insane or to have lost their mind. However, insane people will create more insanity through their rules and regulations if we have no family structure centered on a divine design that was with humankind before the fall in the beginning. Unfortunately, the rulers of this world, for the most part, are psychopaths and completely controlled by fallen angels. The kingdom of heaven culture would be void of such things and we would only have to focus and concentrate on creating a better world in every way for each other. Amen? Amen. We would treat everyone as our extended family. Amen? Amen. This would be heaven on earth. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. Jesus. We love me some Jesus now. Jesus came to the earth with the highest mission of all the prophets before him. However, 
Tragically, Jesus was not welcomed as the Lord and Savior. He was murdered on the cross. Jesus knew his purpose and who he was as the Son of God and gave absolute filial love, piety to heavenly parents and the same filial, filial piety and love for humankind. No one before Jesus, Jesus had ever displayed this kind of love and sacrifice in the name of divine love for heaven and earth. I get real emotional when I talk about Jesus. He, Jesus came to say, all mankind, as a heavenly parent, sons and daughters, he came to satisfy his heavenly parents' desire, heal God's broken heart due to the fall in the court in the evening. But he was murdered on the cross because of the disbelief of the people. The very same people he came to save. The purpose of having the parents, creation for humankind, was for them to become true husband and wife first, then give birth to holy, divine sons and daughters, and multiply as much as stars in the sky and sand on the earth. Amen? Amen. We mostly teach and preach that Jesus came to the earth just to die on the cross. How unfortunate is that mindset for us to have? Jesus came to multiply as many children, as many as the stars in the sky and the sand on the earth. God, our heavenly parent, sent Jesus as a second Adam to give birth to holy divine children, to fill the earth with many holy, fill the earth with many holy divine families. Just as God, our heavenly parent, blessed Adam and Eve, Jesus and his holy bride were to receive the same blessing and fulfill the three great commandments to be fruitful, multiply and take dominion, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves along the ground. Until this commandment is filled, God's kingdom of heaven cannot be established on earth. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Oh no, this is right. This man, right here, called himself a non-binary person. But well, we know what's going on out here in this world today. And addresses himself as them and they. The question then is, what is he? What is that, them and they? Is the deputy assistant of energy for the White House under the Biden administration? This young man right here. This gala was hosted by the White House and paid for by you and me, the taxpayers. In the hard work of the civil rights movement, where even people were lynched, beaten, put in prison, and some even killed for the song, His Truth is Marching On, Glory Hallelujah. When Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have gone to the mountaintop and looked over and seen the promised land, I wonder did he have this picture in mind when he said that? No. It was the kingdom where men and women, boys and girls, would join hands together and sing that great spiritual hymn, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I'm free at last, amen? amen? What do we see in this red dress? Or was he talking about God on earth dwelling with men and women, able to produce children as godly offsprings, which was the second commandment in Genesis 1? In the creation of humankind, God gave us his original mind, and a conscience to do the will of God, and we needed our freedom to return the love to which God is the source of our love, life, and family lineage. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? Will God be able to say about us what he said about Abraham? I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Will God be able to say, I am the God of all Christians in the world? If God cannot say this, because ungodly people have taken over the world, and if you say something that they don't like or make them feel bad, you can be arrested or worse, killed. Oh, I lost my place. Okay. Brothers and sisters. The fifth line down on the right. What? Brothers and sisters, we have no choice. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I still don't see it. Okay. 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 
Oh, here you go. Brothers and sisters, we have no choice. I'm so sorry. Pardon me, okay? The devil is a liar today. Brothers and sisters, we have no choice. We have to keep his truth marching on. But if our churches are closed down for two years like they were during that pandemic, and when they open, we still only meet once or twice a week. While Satan is meeting 24-7 around the world, Amen. we will not win this battle. Amen? Amen. Amen. The American Clergy Leadership Conference, ACLC, is a conference that has dedicated its entire existence to building God's kingdom on this earth. We're not looking to build any more churches. We're only looking for partners who have been called by God to build what, y'all? The kingdom of heaven. Say it with me. The kingdom of heaven. May God bless you immensely for God's kingdom must come and it must come when? Now! Remember the words of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is where now? Within who? Me. Me. Reverend Darty? Next slide, please read that one. The American Clergy Leadership Conference. We are a coalition of clergy united to strengthen marriages, Rebuild families, restore communities, renew the nation and the world. Founded on May 22nd in the year 2000, we are now expanded to the international level as the World Clergy Leadership Conference. We are now stronger than ever in forming this international, interreligious, and intercultural partnership work in kingdom building. Please join us now. God's kingdom on earth needs you. See your port, my spouse, to join today. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Reverend Darty, I give it back to you. Thank you very much. Let's give Reverend DeVetta a hand. Praise <laughs> God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I thank you so much, everybody. I don't need to say a whole lot more. But this kind of truth have to be resounding from the tops of the highest mountain and to the highest levels of power in this country. We always say truth have to speak to power. But in reality, we need power behind our truths where we are not ashamed, we are not afraid. We speak the truth completely without fear. Do you know the first recognition of sin in the earth was fear? When God had asked Adam, where are you? He said, I was hiding because I was afraid. If there's no sin, there'll be no fear. Our love conquers all. And so what I'm saying to you now, the top people it, uh, uh, with, without shame, without, they're demanding that you treat them uh, as crazy as they are, as insane as they are. And if you don't, they, they, they will, 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 will have revenge in some way. So the kingdom of heaven has to take place. The only way that you can combat this is that we have to be uh, uh, outnumbered uh, evil. And that's the reality. It's not something that we just, otherwise God wouldn't have said multiply. What were you talking about multiply for if you don't need numbers? We need numbers. And why do we need numbers? And the next, the next one gives the example. Because we have to take dominion. That's it. It's a simple process. And, you know, we said, you know, God said be fruitful. This fruitfulness means I need you to be one with me. I need you to have my heart, my mind, my soul. We need to fuse together as one. Because the fruitfulness, in this case, it represents the fruit from a, from a, from a uh, uh, the seed from a fruit. And when you plant that seed, it looks just like we just came from. Mm. We became the seed of God. So God wants us to be planted. And even in the parable, it says, you know, make sure your seed goes on fertile soil. So I, 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 I begging all of you in that room to become serious members of the American Clergy Leadership Conference. 
and, and speak truth to power. Mm. Because we have to change that power to tr truth and power on our side. Then we can conquer and we can, this is not something that, you know, what we can say, what are you going to do with your salvation? What are you going to do with it? Sit around and wait until we die, or wait until we thinking we're going to make it to heaven or something. And I, I, don't, I don't think that's, I don't think that's guaranteed to anybody. But what is guaranteed, if we take responsibility, I'll close at this point and turn it over to you. Do you hope I can get some of the response? The very first words that's recorded in the Bible, when God spoke to human beings, he spoke his love in these words. I want you to be fruitful. It's like giving your son or your child the keys to your brand new car. He says, I want you to be careful. Drive the way I drive. Treat my car the way I treat it. When God said fruitfulness, he wanted you to be like him. Be like God. Both the masculine and the feminine side of God. And now, after you've done that, now you're qualified mm. to multiply. Why? Because we need to spread this godliness and this, this beauty and this love and this joy and this hope worldwide. And once we've done that, it's automatic. We can take dominion and rule. Now over something. Huh. Amen. Amen.